The FBI had all that information prior to opening Operation Hurricane, correct? Crossfire Hurricane, is that right? That's correct. Okay. If the FBI had chosen to do so, the multiple pieces of information they had would have allowed them to open a preliminary investigation. Is that right? In our report, we say that the FBI certainly uh, had an obligation to uh, assess the information, you know, perhaps make it a preliminary investigation. That's okay. Our In fact, it would have been a dereliction of duty for the FBI to have just sat on their hands and done nothing with the information that they had. Is that right? Yeah. The FBI should not have ignored that information. Okay. It's also true, isn't it, that the Inspector General of the Department of Justice looked at this situation and concluded that not only did the FBI have enough information to open a preliminary investigation, the FBI had enough information to open a full investigation. That was the conclusion of the Inspector General, correct? My recollection is that the uh, Inspector General said it's a low bar and he thought that it had been met. Um, the Inspector General didn't necessarily address um, well, and, so uh, thank you. I'd like to enter their Inspector General's report dated December 2019 into the record, Mr. Chairman. Without objection. Okay. Turns out the FBI was correct. The Department of Justice found that the Russians interfered in our elections in a, quote, sweeping and systematic manner. A bipartisan U.S. Senate report confirmed that the Russians interfered in the 2016 elections and that that interference benefited Donald Trump. Paul Manafort, Trump's former campaign chairman, also publicly admitted to giving internal Trump campaign data to the Russians, and the U.S. Treasury Department found that this data, which it said was, quote, sensitive information on polling and campaign strategy, was then passed to Russian intelligence services. There is a phrase to describe the facts I just set forth. It's called Russian collusion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to enter both the Treasury Department uh, documents dated April 2021, as well as the Bipartisan Senate Report Intelligence dated August 2020. Without objection. Okay. Now, Mr. Term Durham, I'd like to ask you the following simple yes or no questions. Trump's former campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, was convicted, correct? I'm sorry, could you just repeat that? that Trump's former campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, was convicted, correct? That's correct. Not Trump's in former foreign policy matters. advisor to the campaign, George Papadopoulos, was convicted, correct? That's correct. Trump's former deputy campaign manager, Rick Gates, was convicted, correct? Not in connection with the okay. Russian Trump's. Matter. All right. Mr. Durham, you can hold yourself out as an objective Department of Justice official or as a partisan hack. And the more that you try to spin the facts and not answer my questions, you sound like the latter. So I'm just going to ask this simply. Trump's former national security advisor, Michael Flynn, was convicted, correct? That's correct. Trump's longtime advisor, Roger Stone, was convicted, correct? I'm sorry, I missed the last thing Trump's longtime advisor, Roger Stone, was convicted, correct? Correct. In contrast to multiple Trump associates who were convicted, you brought two cases of jury trial based on this investigation, and you lost both. And so I don't actually know what we're doing here, because the author of the Durham report concedes that the FBI had enough information to investigate, and thank goodness the FBI did, because multiple Trump associates who committed crimes were held accountable. And the best way to summarize what happened is thank you to the brave men and women of the FBI for doing their jobs. I yield back.